I suppose you're wondering what's going on. What's the big event? Well, I'm celebrating a death. The death of an enemy. Don't look so shocked. It happens all the time, except we hide our smug satisfaction behind hypocritical remarks. We kill a person year in, year out with our snide remarks, our innuendo, our cruel ignore, and then praise them when they're dead for qualities we refuse to acknowledge while they were still alive. Well, I'm calling a spade a spade. He's dead, and it's out with the can. No one knows when it all started, it goes too far back for that. But whenever misfortune hit our family, somehow the Martins were always there. Oh, nothing could be pinned down, of course, but nonetheless it always came back to them. It said that our two families were in partnership once, but the business went bankrupt. And when the dust settled, somehow the Martins kept their fine mansion on the hill, and we were out walking the streets. Our family spoke their name in hate for generations. Oh, the liturgy was well drummed into me when I was a kid, and I learned the lesson well. <laughs> I had good reason to. There was a Martin in my class at school, one of those obnoxious kids that gets right up your nose. You know, good looking, so all the girls ran after him and did everything brilliantly with half half trying. I played second fiddle to him right through school. No matter how hard I tried, he always went one better. He even stole the one girlfriend that I had at school. My father died when I was in Form 5. That's Year 12 for you younger ones. He was the town clerk of our city and another Martin was the mayor. My father found evidence of dirty land deals between the mayor and the group of developers and when he tried to expose it, somehow it all rebounded back on him. I think he died of a broken heart. Geoffrey Martin, that's the one who was in my class at school, he came to the funeral. I knew it was just a gloat, so when he came to offer his condolences, I turned my back on him. He left town shortly after that, so I didn't see him much anymore. I heard he became a priest. I joined the army. It suited me. I actually liked it. I volunteered for Vietnam, and when that was over, I was at a loose end for a few years. Did a few things that uh, society probably wouldn't approve of greatly, and eventually I came across some magazines for mercenary soldiers. The upshot was I found myself fighting in some border wars in Central America. That was a bad scene. We were badly supplied, didn't eat properly for weeks. I caught dinghy fever. And then I was captured by some opposition guerrillas. They dragged me before their captain. He was a hard man. He had a whipping stick and he slashed my face and my back to ribbons as he ranted and accused me of being a government spy. When I was half dead anyway. He told his men to take me out and shoot me. I scarcely heard a voice that caught on them to stop. Some missionaries have been caught up in this suite too and an old priest stepped forward. At least I thought he was old until he spoke. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Geoffrey Martin. I heard later that he contracted TB and that in the jungle living had aged him something shockingly. Let him go, he said. The captain snarled. He killed my men, he deserves to die. A death for a death. Isn't that what your book says? Then take me, said Martin. I, I tried to protest, but by this time I had no wits, no voice and the two men haggled over me for what seemed like an eternity. Eventually the captain said, You are stupid missionary, but I admire your courage. The dog can go, and he spat on me as they dragged me out and dumped me on a jungle trail. I, I, I wept. <laughs> I heard the shots back in the cockpit. 
Bells. They let the nuns go too and they looked after me for several weeks while I recuperated. But I, I couldn't look them in the face. I was too ashamed. And as quickly as I head, could, I headed back for the coast. I discovered something ironic when I got back. Obviously, none of this is without sin. The real reason that Geoffrey Martin had left town quickly all those years ago, he'd got a girl into trouble. She'd adopted the kid out, but he didn't take. He just passed from foster home to foster home. And so, hence the celebration. I'm celebrating the death of an enemy. death of anger, hate, pity, envy, all those things that held my family captive for far too long, and the birth of a love, a love that I began to discover in that jungle, and I'm hoping that I can now make real to Geoffrey Martin's son. See, I'm adopting him. We sign the papers tomorrow. And you know something? I think he likes me. Oh, excuse me. That's him now. Coming! <laughs>